Happy holidays and welcome to a special Thursday edition of Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. I'm Megan Triplett. I got John Roser on the call with me. And we figured we should do a special one because it was all NBA day on Christmas Day. So we got to talk about the NBA games because they were memorable. But, Roser, I first want to talk about something that happened a couple of days. We're talking about the Christmas games, and that was Dwayne Wade's tweet. He had a proposal for us all. He said, Christmas games should be earned. Let's have an element of surprise in the schedule. The teams that are playing well are the ones that need to be playing on Christmas Day. Reward the teams just like we reward players with an in-season all-star game. And as most people know, some people were upset about the matchups because I think it would have been bigger leading up into the season. But with injuries, some of his matchups weren't as big as we thought that they were going to be. So, Roser, what do you think about Dwayne Wade's proposal? Well, the, the, the problem with it is um, all of these teams, like, book their hotels months <laughs> in advance. You know, mm-hmm. and it, oh, I think the traveling aspect is the problem. Unless right. you say we're going to put it, we're going to put all the games, um, the Christmas Day games are going to be played in all in Los Angeles or all in Las Vegas or Chicago or whatever. Like they, they're going to be in one place. That's kind of like kind of like an NCAA tournament, like how there's mm-hmm. one location has, you know, X amount of teams there for each pot or whatever. Um, if you did that, that might make it a little easier. But I mean, w- it's not like you can announce Christmas games like on Christmas Eve or the week of Christmas and then have players and teams. Oh, now you got to book your travel. Now you got to book your hotel, uh, your flights, all of that. Um, obviously, they charter everywhere. But uh, that's kind of the problem with waiting till so late to announce Christmas games. Uh, the NBA just got they didn't get they just they weren't lucky this year. You get the injury right. bug hit. Um, you really had Bucks, Sixers, and you had Lakers, Clippers. I mean, Rockets, Warriors, and the Warriors ended up winning the game. But like you, you're counting on Steph and Clay, and then you don't have Steph. Well, you knew Clay wasn't going to be there, obviously, because of his right. injury. But then Curry gets injured at the beginning of the year, and that, and, and so you don't have Curry either. If I mean, if you have Curry and Clay, that's totally different. And then the late game, the Pelicans game. If you've got Zion, it's totally different. But they just got unlucky. But no, Dwayne Wade, we're not putting. We're not going to announce Christmas games the day before or whatever, the week of. You know, I, when, he, when he tweeted that out, it did have me intrigued. Because I said, hmm, how can we reward the best teams? I think it would be interesting because I think, you know, growing up, NBA on Christmas Day has usually been like a very, very anticipated night of all-day games. You know, some people might hate it, but that TV is on. People have to work on Christmas Day. It's exciting. This year wasn't as exciting, but as you mentioned, I didn't expect the Warriors-Rockets game to go the way that it went. I, I would have counted the Warriors out. That ticket probably wasn't a hot ticket as it normally would have been. It wasn't like the con- the, the, the rematch at the, con- at the Western Conference Finals. But if there would be a way to reward a team, it can't be the day before, maybe a month ahead of you know the, the top teams in the Western, on the, on the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference play each other. That would have been great. I know for NBA ratings, it would it would be absolutely amazing. I think there's a lot of factors that you have to figure out, and you mentioned them all. It would be weird when it comes to the travel and then families, players knowing where they're going to be, if they're going to be home, if they're going to be away. But I kind of like it, though, just because on Christmas Day, then I'm guaranteed a hot matchup, a hot ticket, a hot game to watch. All my family were going to be gathered around the TV. So it would have been great because, as you mentioned, like, Let's say the Grizzlies were the hot, the hottest team in the in, in, in the Western Conference. Let's say we have haven't lost, you know, more than ten games. I would love to see us play on Christmas Day, like for us to get that. But I feel that like they're never they're never counting us into that factor for us to play on Christmas Day. So I'm kind of intrigued with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get the injury too. Here's the other thing too with the NBA screwed up. Why you why they schedule the Raptors? Like nobody, okay, nobody cares about the Toronto Raptors in the NBA. But no, they, they won, like, they won it all. No, they won the championship last year. But like the NBA scheduled this, scheduled Toronto being the first day, first game on Christmas Day against the Celtics. They scheduled Toronto knowing Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing for the Raptors. Why are you scheduling the Raptors on Christmas Day? Like you know who to put on because I know Siakam and Gasol are out. Like I will tell you. 
the the average NBA fan who just turns on the NBA on Christmas, the fringe fan or whatever, like that's when they think mm-hmm. the NBA's, they they have no clue who Pascal Siakam is. Like they don't really know who the guy is. They knew Kawhi Leonard. They knew Siakam was yeah, he's, he's a pretty good player. They don't know really anything about Pascal Siakam. Luka Doncic and the Mavericks should have been on. No, and I I know Luka's hurt. He's coming back though. He's coming back. Right. To, but if you would have had if you could have had Doncic, uh, I think scheduling the Mavericks would have been a way better move too. Okay. All right. Well, how about this? Let's now talk about those matchups because the games are all set. We, we knew who was going to play each other. And a game that was really, really big was the Sixers and the Bucks. Sixers get the, over the Bucks. The Bucks have been the hottest team right now. They're, you know, some would say the best team in the league right now. So, Roser, do you think that this is the Eastern Conference Finals that we're going to see when it comes down to the end of it all? I mean, it, it, I, I would say they, they are the favorites. Um, I think most people expect it to be Philly and Milwaukee. I think at the beginning of the year, uh, the experts making their NBA Finals picks, I think the majority of people took either Philadelphia or Milwaukee to come out mm-hmm. of the East. Um, Milwaukee's going to be in that East Finals. I do believe Milwaukee will be there. Now, whether Philly is, I don't know. Um, and I don't know if I trust Philadelphia. I, I, really, I don't know if I trust their team at all. I mean, how do you trust a team that gives Tobias Harris $180 million and lets Jimmy Butler go? Like, I, I mean, who makes that decision right there? Like, I mean, one player is clearly better than the other. Look at what Butler's doing in Miami and look how good Miami is. Because I'd say Milwaukee's going to be there. But I think there's a chance you could see that Miami Heat team in the Eastern Conference Finals, too. Oh, you went way far left than where I was thought you were going. And I know you had another team in mind, too, besides I that. do. I didn't know you were going to say Miami because I'm with you. The Bucks, hands down, will be there. I think we can all safely say they will be in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think the Celtics. One, because Celtics have surprised me. I didn't think Kim Walker going to Boston would have fit so well and then so fast. I mean, what they have going with, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown – that is a really, 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 really good combo right now. And I think everyone talking about Philly, and as you mentioned, I don't trust Philly either because we've seen we, over the years, we've seen Philly have the pieces and not be able to pull it off when it comes to the playoffs every single time. And I think Boston this year might surprise everybody. I think what Giannis has going, it's going to be so hard for anyone get to get past him. He's just a, 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 a now that he's at a three point. But I would say Boston. I, you know what, Miami. That is a that's a that's a hot take. I don't know if I see Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals just yet. I mean, I we've seen them a couple of times, and I, I just I, I'd like uh, you know they're going to get Dragic back to um, mm-hmm. had some other injuries with with some with some key rotation players there in Miami, and I just man, they're tough. Like they're a tough team, and I, I like the tough teams. They they kind of have that the they got the, they got a little grit and grind in them too, uh, where it's not mm-hmm. all pretty with Miami, but. That they're a very tough team, and I think even even if they don't make it to the East Finals, whoever plays them in the playoffs, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel it after the series. You're gonna you're gonna be hurt. Well, you know what else someone is probably feeling right now? LeBron James is feeling that groin. So as you guys know, leading up to that Lakers Clippers game, that was the prime time matchup on Christmas night. And leading up to it, we didn't know if LeBron or AD were gonna play. It was questionable, but they had an impromptu practice. LeBron did, and he re-aggravated that growing, and now it's saying that he's going to possibly miss a couple of weeks. The Clippers had an amazing game. They're able to contain LeBron. He missed 10 of 15 three-pointers, which is the most in his 17-year career, and now it leads to the question, should LeBron have even played on Christmas night? I mean, I'm glad he did. Obviously, <laughs> You aggravated the groin injury, and you may miss some time now. That that injury kept him out a long time last season. It's the first series, and I mean, he's thirty five years old now. And when you when you're th- when you're thirty five and you're getting on up there, th- having a reoccurring groin injury is I mean that is not fun. It, it, it cannot be fun at all. This is the first kind of serious injury he's had since the early Miami days when he had the back problems. Um, and I know he missed a couple of weeks with a back issue. Um, and it actually caused him to change up his entire workout routine and how he works out now, um, doing a lot more core core stuff just to strengthen his lower back and strengthen his core. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that totally changed everything. Look, I mean, obviously he aggravated it, so no, he shouldn't have played. Um, am I glad he did? Because, yes, because we've had so many other stars missing from games uh, yesterday that I'm actually glad the stars were available and playing in that one yesterday. Uh, but, no, obviously if he re-aggravated it, no, he shouldn't have been playing. You know, I, I, I'm i with you, and I know, like, but I'm with you on that he shouldn't have played because now that he's, he's re-aggravated it. LeBron is LeBron. Leading up to it, I knew there's no way they're going to sit out, like, LeBron is going to sit himself out. LeBron did say after the game that he did feel good. He's like, I felt good going into the game. But I think my, my only question is, I think he should have came out of the game a lot sooner because yeah. you saw him struggling. Patrick Beverly was on him. He he didn't look he didn't look like himself. Like it, it didn't take his three pointers to figure that out. He didn't look like himself. So I do think he should have came out of the game. I know LeBron is LeBron. He's a superstar. And it's probably really really hard to tell LeBron you can't go into the game because it's Christmas Day. I know it's he he knows what what it is all centered around, and he knows what he brings to the NBA, which I have so much respect for him being aware of that, but I think he should have came out of the game earlier. I don't think he should have finished the game because now you're looking at a couple of weeks, and now the Lakers, as you see, they're struggling a little bit. They've lost a couple of games back-to-back. -back. They've got a tough back-to-back -to -back coming up this weekend, and when they probably could have you know, needed LeBron or not had it being re-aggravated, now it's going to be a little bit longer, and now you've got a lot of teams on your tail. As you see, the we the Western Conference, it is, it is heated. It is jam-packed, full of talent. Yeah. And you got a team that's plays at your same stable center who's looking really, really good. I think he just, she should have just came out a little bit earlier. Yeah. I, I, the, the other thing, obviously, hindsight is always 20-20. Like, we can always right. look back because he re-aggravated and we can say, well, yeah, he should have been playing. But the truth mm -hmm. is, as you said, like he said, he said, I felt good going into the game. And that's kind of the thing where it is – to, it is tough for me to say, no, he shouldn't have been playing because that guy knows his body better than anybody else does. I mean, you, you, you know your own body better than anybody else does. You know how you, you know if you feel right. And you know if something feels off. Like, I'll always, re I'll always remember that Tony Allen telling that story that he's, his, he, he swears his hand was broken. And Grizzlies medical staff was telling him at the time, the staff that was here, they're not, obviously they're not the medical staff anymore. They're telling him like, no, you're good enough. You're healthy enough to play. And he's like, I am telling you, my hand is, there's something wrong here. This does not feel right. Like, you know, your body better than anyone else. And so if he says he felt good enough to play going into it, then I guess you do kind of have to just take his word for it. It's, I mean, he did have like, you know, 24 points, like nine rebounds, 10 assists or whatever it was. He almost had a triple double. So. Uh, I know LeBron is still LeBron. It's really hard to say LeBron had a bad game because the bad game is that his stats are always going to still be in the double figures. But he when did, you have, he did not shoot it well though. That is that right. is he did not shoot it well. Yeah, he was only oh. what, two of twelve from three. So yeah, Ooh, not the LeBron they were used to seeing. But LeBron will always be LeBron. He's a competitor. He's an athlete. He is like a full around just super athlete who's never going to sit. He doesn't really believe in load management. So we know that from LeBron. It's it's just sitting in this and sitting in this seat right now. It's like, oh, I hate for him to sit out for a couple of weeks because what they got going with the Lakers has been absolutely amazing. And you know, you never know. Maybe they can still pull it off without him if he even sits a couple of weeks. We'll see. Yeah. Well, Christmas Day was fun. So I like this three point stands NBA edition. We hope everyone had a wonderful holiday and continue a great holiday next week. Rose and I will be back same time, same place on a Monday, but Thursday night special edition. I like it. We're going to have New Year's resolutions for you next week. Ooh, bowl games, maybe? Bowl games. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a New Year's wish for our local Ooh. Memphis Grizzlies. Okay, I'm going I'm to come up with my New Year's resolution, too, and a wish. I'm thinking about it. All right, thanks so much for watching Three Point Stance, presented by Mountain Dew.